known in East Germany for her Yiddish songs that appeared on grand stages for state institutions, on state radio, and also in intimate smoky bars of the East Berlin intelligentsia. In addition to her passion for performing Yiddish music, she was also a survivor of Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen. With that experience, she became a central figure in East German war crimes trials, testifying against those who carried out the Holocaust in the Netherlands. In this case, a clip I'm about to show you, against Konrad Gemmeker, the commandant of Westerbork, who had served a very short sentence after the war for his crimes, and was at that time living free in Germany, in West Germany. This was an affront that neither anti-fascist East Germany nor Lynn could countenance. And so the country held a trial in absentia, one of several that it carried out. Lynn was also an eyewitness to a person who would become in the 1950s a global symbol of Nazi atrocities, and Frank. Yaldati knew Otto, who was in debt to her for the news that she had given of his daughter's last days. One way he paid that debt was by accepting Lynn's request to grant rights to produce in East Germany the play, the Broadway play, as well as the first ever film adaptation of her diary. If she was nationally famous for her Yiddish music and for being the most visible Jewish Auschwitz survivor, her role as eyewitness to Anne Frank's life and death brought her global renown. At the height of the Cold War, Lynn, her Yiddish music, and her survival story especially, bearing witness to Anne Frank's last days, made her a valuable asset to East Germany. In 1959, Lynn traveled to London for a three-week visit as a cultural diplomat for East Germany to perform her Yiddish music and tell stories about Anne Frank's last seven months. Press notices about the upcoming concert appeared in all the major newspapers, and posters, like this one, advertising the concert could be seen all over London. She even appeared on the BBC and the new TV station ITV, singing and talking about Anne Frank.
<laughs> Lynn's show opened September 20th, 1959. Here's a photograph from her concert. In London's West End, at the 1500-seat Princess Theatre, to a sold-out crowd. Her seven songs that she's performed at the London Press Preview included four, included four by Mordechai Geberti, who wrote Sprint, probably her favorite Yiddish composer who himself was killed in the Krakow ghetto in 1942. The press event and possibly the concert, I haven't found the concert program for this concert, closed with the song that many in her audience would have recognized, if not actually known, Zognit Kemo, Never Say. When she sang this song for audiences in London, Paris, or later New York, it was a Jewish national partisan song. But in 1965, she toured Asia with the same song as part of East Germany's diplomatic campaign to build cultural relations with other communist or non-aligned countries. There, when she performed Zognish Kenmo for rice farmers in Indonesia, <laughs> and factory workers in North Korea. Wow. It was the song of an oppressed people, an integral part of her multilingual anti-fascist repertoire. Thank you. 